Welcome to the southwest tip of the Reykjanes Peninsula here in Iceland, right where the plate boundary that runs through the Atlantic Ocean comes ashore. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey out here in Iceland, and I wanted to share this special location with you. It's a bit of a tourist stop. They've got the parking lot here, a little trail, and then let's go take a look at the signage here. So uh, we can see there's a little bridge over this chasm and we have a sign here. So let's check this out. It says, welcome to the Eurasian plate. So you are here. So we are on one side of a vast tectonic plate, one of the larger plates uh, on the planet that makes up much of Europe and Asia, as well as parts of the Atlantic Ocean and other locations. Pretty cool. What more could we find here? Well, let's walk across this bridge and see. So we've got a nice little bridge that's been constructed. This interesting depression, valley, rift, if you want to call it that, that runs right uh, perpendicular to the bridge. And we have the view looking to the northeast. Then we have another sign, bridge between the continents. So uh, I must be on the Eurasian plate. And as I take a few more steps in this direction, I must be on the North American plate, the other side of this divergent plate boundary. So we walk across. We go to the sign and it says, welcome to the North American plate. And there's the North American plate. That was pretty cool. I just took a few steps and walked across a plate boundary. And we can look at this plate boundary here. Pretty cool. Easy scale to comprehend. One side's North America, one side's Eurasia, and the two sides spread apart. All right, that's it, we're done. Well, not exactly. It's not that easy. Um, and it's not that simple. So let's take a look here at what's really going on here. If we come along this fissure, and a non-erupted fissure at that, this, this is not a crack where magma or lava emerged from the ground come over here um, we can see there's another interesting escarpment and it looks like there's maybe another similar feature kind of through the sand here all this windblown sand near the coast but we have a nice pronounced escarpment a little cliff face if you will of basalt and maybe not as perfectly formed as the one with the bridge but a very similar feature walls of volcanic rock on either side and um, a little valley running down the middle that's been filled in with sand well what's going on here well let's first take uh, an aerial view of this location from google earth And then let's look at the big picture here. So I've got a diagram that'll hopefully explain this a little bit better. So we are located probably about here at this little crack where the bridge was. But these plate boundaries tend to be a lot wider than the bridge would have you believe. They're not discrete features that are narrow. They tend to be a broader region of more complicated tectonic activity um, structures that define the actual plate boundary. So instead of just being a few steps from the Eurasian plate to the North American plate, the actual plate boundary as the Mid-Atlantic Rift or Ridge comes ashore here in Iceland is something on the order of about five kilometers, about three miles in width. So it's a much broader feature than the signs would have you believe. So the signs are a little bit of false advertising. Uh, it's fun for tourists to walk across the bridge 
with the crack in the ground and say, hey, we just, we just went from one plate to the other, but that's not telling the full story. What we really have here is a series of extensional faults or what we call normal faults that make up the plate boundary. And in places, because we're thinning the Earth's crust and we're generating magma beneath it and we're having volcanoes erupt periodically, um, we have, in some of these cases, some of these cracks, like the one that the bridge spans, is probably sitting over an arrested dike, a dike that propagated upward, formed the structure that the bridge spans, but that dike didn't actually breach the surface and form a volcanic eruption. In other places, we might see those. So you can see a series of these normal faults dropping the rocks and the crust down towards the center of the rift. And then if you go back up onto the southeast side, you'd see these starting to rise up. So we're thinning the Earth's crust here. Um, we've got these tension fractures, these places like the bridge spans here, these openings, and then in other places we have these discrete faults. So this is a little better view, a little better cross section just thrown together quickly, but more accurate than what the signage would have you believe. And you can actually see uh, this fault, which is pretty much probably the, the northwest most fault along the plate boundary uh, runs right through here. You can see that the left side, the northwest side, is sitting higher than the southeast side. So this is a fault where this side is moved down, but also to the right. So this side of the fault is moving this way relative to this side, which is moving up and to the left. And it's offsetting and exposing these stacked lava flows of some age, not sure exactly how old these are, but certainly within the last few thousand years, I would surmise. So across this plate boundary, which again is four or five kilometers in width, we would expect to see a whole series of these features. And the Google Earth view is a nice way to see um, just how these structures trend across this portion of the peninsula and how they define this part of the plate boundary. Let's go up one more little hill here, take a look at it. You can see it's mostly black sand here, but there are some white specks and those white specks are little pieces of organic material, um, shell fragments and such that are blown in from the coastline. The, we're probably only maybe a quarter mile or so, maybe, kilometer from the uh, beachfront and so this stuff gets wind blown with the fierce North Atlantic winds yeah this is a nice view here some nice ropey pohoihoi textures in these lava flows um, but then a nice view here of the northwest shoulder of this plate boundary, these structures, and then you can see things sort of stair-stepping down, the topography getting lower, and lighting's not awesome, but as we look into the distance, the topography starts to rise again as we get towards the other side of the plate boundary, again across a distance of a few kilometers or so. So a little more accurate depiction of what's going on here. Bridge between the continents, eh, not quite bridge across a fissure or a structure within the plate boundary zone absolutely but i understand how you have to sell these things to to tourists and folks just kind of make it simplified but are we really standing on one plate boundary versus another just as we walk across that bridge not exactly but still fun nonetheless and still just a fascinating location where the volcanic activity and the tectonics just come together um, in just such a dramatic way. So thanks again for joining me on this fun little short video here in Iceland. Thanks for your support of the channel. There's a thanks button below the viewer. There's a PayPal link also in the video description if you'd like to support the channel and help me continue to make these geology education videos. Thanks again from the play boundary zone of the Reykjanes Peninsula here in Iceland.